What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUp Free Essentials. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to model a stair and railing in SketchUp Free. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so when we create our stair, the first thing we need to do is we need to calculate our riser depth, meaning how far back our risers are going to go. And so in order to do that, the first thing we need to know is we need to know the height of the area that we want to cover. So in this case, I'm gonna use the tape measure tool right here. I'm just gonna measure from here to here. And I know that this is going to be nine feet of vertical space that we need to cover. Okay, and so first off, we need to figure out, now that we know that this is gonna be nine feet, we need to figure out what our riser height should be because we want our risers to be equally spaced across here, right, for our nine feet. And so the way that I like to do this is draw a line down. So I'm just gonna use the line tool and draw a line across the surface. Well, remember there's an option on an edge to right click and divide it. And so what you can do is you can move your mouse and notice how it's going to divide this into segments and you can see what those segments are going to be, right? Well, in this situation, I need these to be at least seven and three quarters of an inch or less. So if I move my mouse, the closest I have is going to be this seven and three sixteenths of an inch right here. So that's going to be my riser height. So notice what this did is this divided these up into riser pieces right here. And so we can select this and jump into our entity info. So if we go to entity info, we can see there's gonna be 15 edges. That means there's going to be 15 risers. Now you might've seen people come in here and draw the risers flat, so one foot like this, and then we know there's gonna be 15 of them, so use the move tool in copy mode in order to copy this across, and type in 14, that'll give us 15 total. And then what we could do is we could push pull this so that it aligns with those edges. So definitely a valid way of doing this, but to me, it's not really my favorite, um, only because it's going to take a lot of additional time in order to do this. And I need to tap the control key to go to create new face mode. And then notice how I'm just aligning this with these edges right here. And then what you would do is you would come in here and you would erase out all of these additional edges in here like this. And it would give you kind of this like smooth face. I don't really like doing it that way because there's a lot of push pulling that I don't necessarily want to do. What I'm gonna do instead is I'm going to rough out a riser profile over here. So I'm assuming this riser is gonna be one foot long. Then I'm just gonna draw a line down that aligns with this first segment right here. Well, now what I can do is I can select these by doing a click and then a shift click. And I can use the move tool in copy mode. So I'm gonna tap M tap control and single click like this. That allows me to create a copy right there. Well, then you can type in star and then a number of copies. So in this case, it would be times 14. And so notice what this has done is this has given us the profile of our stair right here. And then we can activate the push tool, push pull tool by tapping the P key and moving our mouse across like this. Note that if this comes in here as a hollow face, which it does sometimes, you can tap the control key to go into create new face mode and that should fix this being hollow. Now, in this situation, I want this stair to be kind of sloped. I don't necessarily want it to be this big, uh, this big thick slab in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw a line down here and then a line across here and then I can draw a diagonal to connect those two edges. Well, now I can use the push pull tool and I can remove this material just by push pulling to this back wall. So now I've got my stair in here and you could move this back or forth depending on if you wanted it to be this full width, right? Six feet is a little bit wide, but in this situation, I think it'll work fine. So in this case, I'm just gonna triple click. I'm gonna make it a group so my faces aren't merging with edges anymore. I might also come in here and erase out any extra edges that I had along this surface right here. But now we have a stair. But what we wanna do is we also wanna add a rail. There's a bunch of different ways you can add railings. We can talk about more complex railings at some point. At this point though, I just wanna show you a fast way to add some additional rails or to add a rail 
in here. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by drawing a guideline. So I'm just gonna draw a line over here and we're gonna say it's gonna be maybe, we'll say three inches off of this edge. So I'm just gonna draw an edge right here. I just want this to be a simple pipe rail. So I'm just going to draw, give it a radius of maybe half an inch. That'll give it a full radius of one inch. So something like this. And maybe we'll make it a little bit bigger. I'm actually not sure what the dimensions of stair rails actually are, so I'll give it a radius of one inch. But what I wanna do, and I'm actually not gonna erase out this edge yet, is I wanna use the move tool in copy mode, and I'm gonna copy this up here. I'm gonna find the midpoint, of this edge right here. And so what I'm doing is basically giving myself another guideline because we're gonna draw a line up like this off of this edge and we're gonna create a path and we're gonna use the follow me tool. And I'm gonna say this is gonna to go to a height of three foot, six inches like this. And then we'll do the same thing down here. So we'll just say three foot, six inches. And then you can go ahead and you can erase this out so this is a smooth circle. And so then, because these both have the same height, I'm just gonna use the line tool and I'm just gonna draw a line across here like this. Well now, what we've created is we've created a path. And so I can select the three pieces of this path by doing a shift click, and then I can activate a tool called the Follow Me tool, which I can link to a full tutorial on in the notes down below, but basically it's a tool that extrudes a profile along a path. So let's go ahead and click in here, activate Follow Me, and then we're going to click, and what that's gonna do is that's gonna extrude this along your path just like this. So now we have our rail figured out. Um, so our rail is already in here. Now we need to add some intermediates. And so to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use the move tool in um, not copy mode or array mode, but rather divide mode. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the move tool. I'm gonna select this edge and I'm just going to tap the M key, tap the control key to go into copy mode and I'm gonna move my mouse right here. So at the moment, I don't really care about the copy it's creating here. I'm giving this an end point. And then I'm gonna type in the forward slash and then something like three or forward slash four and hit the enter key. And so it looks like seven is going to be a good fit in here. So that's gonna give us a rail on every other step, which might be a little bit of overkill, but I, I think we're okay for what we're doing right now. And then usually what I'm gonna do in a situation like this is I'm gonna push pull this up until it aligns with this object. And I don't get too crazy with these. I just push pull them across until they're kind of inside of the rail right here. That's usually close enough because we're just using this to kind of visualize um, the stair. So I'm just going to push pull it up like this. Now, one thing you might've noticed is this is coming in here with all of these edges unhidden. So to fix that, all we have to do is notice how this got exploded. Right, so if I click in here, this curve on the outside got exploded into the individual edges. Well, you can just double click and then do a shift click to remove the face from the selection. You can right click and you can click on weld edges. Notice how now this is not individual edges anymore. Now if I push pull this up like this, it's going to align just fine with my tube. So we've got that in here. A lot of the time what I'll do with something like this is I'll make it a component. I will just call this vertical rail. And then I'll just use the move tool in copy mode to create copies of it that align with the bottom. So we'll type in times six and hit the enter key. And now we have our rail. And so one other thing I might do because these edges are still showing up in here is I might double click in here and just pick up the edges on this face. So double click into the component, pick up those edges. And so in this case, I'm just gonna double click in here. I'm gonna tap the E key and I'm gonna hold the shift key. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow me to hide this edge. Now I don't have a dark edge that's showing up everywhere this rail occurs. All right, so that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions about anything we talked about. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.